Welcome to part two of this Warhammer Dad terrain tutorial on building a lava river board. So we are going to get right back into it and start laying some sand on some tiles. All right, so here's the first one done and drying the first panel. It's got a sand on it. Uh, here is the second panel. Um, I tend to go with the glue method and get out of the light here because the paint would probably, a lot of people do lay paint, put the sand on that and it sticks to it and then you paint over it again. Ultimately it's probably cheaper than glue, however, if you notice, if you come down in here, I'm a mess with my sand and I get sand everywhere and the problem with paint is paint tends to get down in the cracks, it gets in the crevices, and anywhere that the paint is the sand will stick. This way, if I'm careful with my glue, I don't have an issue with that and then I just uh, paint over it later. All right, the next little tidbit is when I do the sand, I do the glue in bits and pieces. I leave some glue out. I don't bring the sand all the way out to the end of the glue because if you do, you'll lay down the next glue and then as you're brushing your glue around, you're going to push the sand around, you're going to end up with some bald spots uh, or an easily noticed uh, line of demarcation. Uh, the other thing I do is I just lay the glue down and I'm using some wood glue because, well, I happen to have a some around that I didn't know about. Now some people, and I used to mix the glue off to the side in water, what I found is if I just leave my glue brush in some water, that's enough water that it all will mix together. And as you see, whoops, now I'm making a mess. The other nice thing about the glue, doing it with the glue, is that's going to dry. Um, and really, I'm just going to put my finger down there as soon as I come off of off of uh, film here and uh, off camera and I'll just wipe that off. It's uh, sticky enough that it'll stick to my finger unlike paint which that would just be I'm gonna have sand there. Um, some people do better with paint and would argue the exact opposite of what I'm saying and that's okay you just figure out what works for you and that's that's the way it is. And there you have it. And now I've cleaned that glue out and I'm not going to have a problem with sand in there. Uh, even if you did get a little sand down in there that stuck it wouldn't matter. Um, which is an argument for the paint one because you're just going to caulk over it. However, getting a bunch of sand down on these sides or in the cracks, that's a whole different ball of wax. Alright, um, back in a minute. Okay, I'm back with my glue, and I'm just showing this to show uh, I use a leftover blister pack. Uh, I like how this gives me a little more control. Uh, the uh, well actually serves as a little place to store your sand, and then the uh, scoop front uh, actually works to uh, help deliver it. Uh, so I just stuck this in here as a uh, just a quick tip on how I did something. The other nice thing about my... Uh using one of these little uh, blister packs as your sand thing is you can also because it's a real pain to actually dump the tarp every time so I just take all that extra sand I just scoop it up put it over the side you can actually use this thing to put it back in the bag if you want um, yes you could just leave all the sand there but you know, then it grinds into the back of the board, and um, so, and then you know, you just flip it over onto this side, and if you feel like it, if you want to do it, you can just dump it back in there for safekeeping. I actually might do that because it's going to be a while before I can get to the others, um, or you can just leave it on the side here and use it, uh, use it with your next board. So. next board on here you start putting your glue and then you just scoop it and spread it all right um, got four more boards to go all right so I took a break um, from the main thing and uh, came to do some little terrain pieces so this I just took some scraps uh, and glued them down to a piece of the scrap hardwood uh, hardboard uh, here I just made a couple little rocks and I've gone ahead and I'm part way through I went ahead and put the glue together in some sand, but I ran out of glue 
uh, another one that's got the sand. A couple of little small sort of spouts um, here with going to have a little lava in them. Then uh, some spires that are also going to double as uh, lava tubes. And this is my exploding one. Uh, just uh, in the future, I'll have to remember don't do the uh, caulk until after you've laid the sand down and uh, the first coat of paint because this is going to be a real pain. Uh, so for these all I did was I stacked up a bunch of scraps and then cut them uh, into shape and glued them down. Uh, this uh, did the same, cut it to shape from scraps uh, and then filled the holes with caulk. Uh, and I just used a little piece of scrap uh, foam uh, to to push it down and rough it up uh, and just wet the end a little bit so that it wouldn't stick quite so bad. All right, um, I ran out of glue so I'm gonna have to run to the store tomorrow and uh, get some more PVA. Okay, I got the first layer of black on here. Uh, I think it'll just be enough. I just picked up some black latex paint. A um, Couple of things of note, uh, I went ahead and got the edges uh, just so that it'll look uh, all complete at the end. Um, I did not think about how thin I made some of these uh, little cutouts for the lava um, and they became a real pain to get the brush down into. I'll probably have to touch up a few little spots there but I'm not going to worry about the bottom because well there's going to be caulking down in there but uh, one thing to think about when you're cutting yours out is uh, uh, how much it's going to take to uh, get the brush down in there uh, and getting all these little holes can be a real pain. So anyway, off to the other uh, seven panels. All right, I had to voice over this part because I had music playing in the background, uh, which is apparently a YouTube no-no. Um, but basically black latex paint. I just use plain old latex paint. Uh, it's kind of sticky and holds the sand down pretty good. Um, the big tips here are make sure you use uh, the brush from multiple directions, otherwise you end up with uh, areas of the sand showing through when you spin uh, the panel and look from another side. So just make sure you hit it all uh, ways. Uh, what I do is about halfway through, I'll, uh, I'll spin the panel so I can see it uh, and make sure I don't end up with any uh, bald spots or uh, uh, little areas of uh, sandy texture. Um, so uh, while this is drying, I uh, will then go on and do some more on the little terrain pieces. All right, so once I get aside, I go down and I paint the edges just to... Then what I do is I just kind of flip it around the corner here. Um, oop, getting a little tight here. And I just use, these as leftover packing paper from the last time I moved. I just kept a big box of it uh, instead of packing it up and recycling it. Uh, and then I have a chance to look and see, make sure everything is good. You can see how I missed some right along the edges. And I'll come do this edge right here. All right. All right, now you may be asking why I didn't take uh, this, oops, this edge here off. Um, you know, just cut this down and make it even. Uh, a couple reasons. One is uh, it gives me a very quick reference uh, to what should be on the outside, the two, the two long sides of the board. Uh, so a little quicker to put it down. And then second, I was really afraid I was gonna mess up the uh, edges. Um, uh, and not have as straight or you know or the right length uh, and end up messing it up if you're gonna do that if you're gonna cut it off you want it perfectly square so you can make it even more modular um, then what I recommend doing is doing it at the very beginning before you uh, ooh, before you even uh, uh, start uh, gluing down to your boards um, and I'm being very messy here and that's okay. Uh, this is sort of my messy, I'm just glopping it on. Uh, you know, kind of looking at it as thicker is better, just more protection for the board, hold the sand down better. Um, and uh, the brush is already ruined, so I'm not worried about being too careful with that. So, all right, let me uh, finish this up. I'll be back in a minute. All right, now the part that's a real pain is getting all these edges. Um, I kind of start out with the, the, uh, big, the big brush just to see what I can get, uh, some of the bigger, flatter areas. Um, what I found is that really doesn't do me a whole lot of good and I end up 
having to switch over to the smaller brush. Uh, so you may want to just do that right off the bat. And anywhere that's really tight, the big one's not going to do much for you anyway. Um, but some of these bigger, flatter areas, you can uh, at least get a lot of it started. Um, so let me uh, let me switch over to the smaller brush, and uh, I'll come back. All right, I've switched over to the smaller brush, um, and you can see it's a little easier, but uh, you know it's still tough to get down inside of things, uh, and it's just a lot of a lot of work and a lot of patience. I don't really worry too much about the the bottom because that's going to be full of uh, caulk here in a little bit. Uh, so just be prepared that this is going to be a little bit time consuming, it's going to take a little while, and uh, your brush will probably never be the same, but I'll probably clean it off and make this my dry brush and brush, and uh, then I won't have to worry too much about it. All right, and the last little tip for this part is make sure you spin it and check it for all the sides, because like right through here looked like it was good to go from two of the other sides, uh, but now I've spun it this way, and you can see how uh, I've missed some pretty significant pieces. So uh, the other thing is you could just airbrush this. Um, you can also see right here and here where I missed some spots. Um, you could just airbrush this, but uh, I didn't do that because I was afraid that it uh, would maybe be a slightly different color. I would, may come through, I probably will come through at the very end and just some little, like little tiny spots, like if there's something like that left over, I'll just airbrush those little itty bitty pieces. Um, but in general, you can you can get a brush in there most of the way. All right. Okay, I lied. One more. Uh, another thing you should probably do before you move on is pick it up and look at the edge, because you can see how those things just disappeared. I mean, you can see them. Uh, you know, as you pick it up, you can actually see way up under there all these pieces that just didn't really look like I had missed them. Uh, same thing down, I had found a couple in the little cracks. Uh, so, just uh, look at it at every angle before you move on. Alright, got started on uh, the volcano-like thing. Uh, I got a little bit of what's well, going to be lava there. I uh, actually forgot to put the sand on the flat piece there, so uh, while the paint is still wet, I just threw some sand on there. Uh, later I'll come back, I'll get some of these little pieces I've missed, and the back, which I have not uh, paint painted yet. All right. All right, so here is the first five done. Um, as you can see, I've gone ahead, done it through all the little cracks and everything. Uh, this is just a bridge I'm putting together uh, to go with it. Um, and then I have just one last one left, and that's all as far as uh, the terrain that's left to be uh, coated with its first black coat. All right, so that's the end of part two of this Warhammer Dad tutorial on building a lava board. Uh, please come on back and check out part three.